read a book. Oh yes, that would be handy. Hello everyone, we're live. I left my copy at work because I'm silly like that. But hello oh, everyone. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to our live show. Hello, uh, to everyone, we're live. I, oh, I can I hear left myself. My copy at work. <laughs> Really like that. But hello um, everyone. Oh my god, that's <laughs> me. That's me. Show. I'm on the page listening to <laughs> the live show. Hold on, just listening to yourself. I, yeah, that's exactly I just didn't mind. <laughs> I literally just had to like pause it because I was like, oh no, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> I know. I was very confused. I was like, what, what's going on? <laughs> Is there feedback going? Yeah. 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 Oh, but I was hearing it so clearly I didn't click that it was it was me watching myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Good job. laughs> Go me, I know what I'm doing. Uh, welcome everyone to our live show. This is going to be the last live show that we do in 2018. Oh I was God. about to say 2017. For, going back for, in town, wow. I know. Well, it's, it's 11 a.m. and still too early for me, apparently. Um, but yes, welcome to our live show uh, for the name of the book. Very, very exciting today. We have our new co-host from Brisbane, Hi. Michelle. Welcome, Yay. Michelle. We're I'm so here. We're really, really pleased to have Rochelle joining our hosting ranks, uh, helping us out in Brisbane, which is fantastic. So, yay. Well, I'm the only one from Brisbane that showed up today, so it's probably a good thing. <laughs> Oh my God, 1 a.m. there. I'm impressed, guys. Okay, oh, wow. so yes, we're going to be talking about Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha and Young. And I think we'll start out with some spoiler free thoughts, talking about our general ratings for the book and just a few thoughts here and there. Um, for those of you watching, we'd love to hear as well what you thought of the book. So let us know. And if you have any questions, feel free to either tweet us or leave a comment on this live show. And we will hope to get to everything so yes. Rochelle, Rochelle brand making new yeah. do you want to start yeah. kick us off um yeah your star rating and a few thoughts on the book so I took a break during reading the book because obviously I was just like oh shit I'm a host now I have to actually like have thoughts on this <laughs> <laughs> um so I got about a third of the way in the first time mm -hmm. was mildly enjoying it um and then I got to like I stopped it where she first goes to see the king yeah and I was like I don't know if I want to continue reading this because mm -hmm. I was not about it not having a fun time um mm -hmm. I think in the end I gave it 3.5 stars I did really like the obviously the diverse aspects and the female female relationship which we need more of mm -hmm. um but yeah just like there was some <laughs> visualization issues i had with the beast aspects like i feel like we needed maybe some illustrations to properly visualize those because i know that was a comment that came up a lot at the brisbane meetup like no one could figure out what everyone looked like yeah <laughs> definitely mm -hmm. but yeah i'm i'm sitting at a 3.5 for this one i think awesome fabulous Sophia, what did you think? Oh, okay, I'm going to go now. Okay, I thought you were going to go. Okay, so <laughs> I so I think on Goodreads I gave it a four, but then I think at the meet I said it was like a 3.7, 3.8, but I think I'll just bump it up to a four at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really enjoyed it. I definitely found it to be um, like something like quite unique to the genre. I definitely liked how she incorporated a lot of the like Malaysian and Chinese mythology within the story and also how she drew on history to talk about like how like the paper girls were like and all the concubines and things like that um that happened within the dynasties back then um I also loved the um female female romance I thought that was really lovely and we definitely need more of that mm -hmm. um and I also will say that yeah it was a little bit difficult to visualize the moon cast people like I kind of got the steel cast like steel castle was kind of like they said like they had like slight animalistic features like you know like like different ears or like fur on their hands and things like that whereas like moon cast i thought like i think to me i think i said it was almost like they're like 75 percent beast and 25 percent human mm -hmm. but at the same time i thought i didn't couldn't quite visualize what they looked like um yeah so that was a little bit of an issue but i also wanted like 
a bigger map in the book, but apparently in like, I think which, which edition was it that had like the world map? I know that there was two people at our meet that had the owl crate one and the yeah. end pieces were the map. I can't, I haven't checked my fairy loot because mm-hmm. that, that was a hardcover. So I'm not sure if all hardcovers had it or if it was an owl crate exclusive. So maybe yeah. watching, if you've got a fairy loot edition or just a general hardcover edition of the book does it have a world yeah. map because in the paperback like the, we didn't yeah because the paperback was just um the paperback was just the palace like that mm. and just the yeah. and things like that so but ob- and obviously the story takes place within this entire section but um when we looked at the owl crate map it was really good to see like where lay actually like where her village was compared to where the courts were and because it also kind of gave us perspective in terms of the politics of the world how like paper cast are like they're just generally quite happy to just go about their business and not interfere with with steel and moon cast people um but obviously people were a little bit confused as to like why that was and I think it was just good to have that visual representation of like just how far apart things were like in terms of distance but also in terms of like the way they thought about moon cast people as well so yeah yeah yeah, exactly. Um, so as for me, I think I'm sitting at around a four stars, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go with four stars. Um, I also really enjoyed it. And also I love that my shirt's kind of in, <laughs> on, on brand with the book. I didn't actually think about it until I was like, yeah, girl gang. Um, yeah, so I also really, really liked the romance, loved seeing the female-female relationship blossom. Um, I... I think it was like the last half of the book that really hooked me and, and I felt more engaged with. The first bit I felt it was a little bit slow and I'd keep putting it down every so often. Um, and I think overall I would have liked to see more development um, and just explanation with the cast system and the magic and things like that. I felt yeah, like it was... We, no, yeah, I was going to say, because we have that little, um, that little page at the beginning explaining mm-hmm. things, but, yeah, I think it needed a little bit more depth to it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. just because when there was things later on in the book, things being described, it just seemed like there was, you you knew what they were talking about so they didn't go into further description, but it was like, I just wanted to explore more of it. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, mm. so I just wanted a little bit more from it, but overall I did really enjoy it, thought it was really engaging and I'm excited for the next book. With yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm I'm so excited. I really, I would definitely continue this series. Like, I oh, think- absolutely. I think a few of us at the meet thought it was a standalone at mm. first until mm. they read the last yeah, part of it, which we won't speak about yeah. um, until later on. But, yeah, yeah. so. Well, when um, Jean and I were talking about it at the Brisbane meetup, she said that she'd watched an interview with Natasha and there was originally 14 levels of the cast system. What? It was God. just like, wow, oh, imagine yeah. <laughs> trying to explain all of that in your first book. Oh, so, I feel like I feel like if she wanted to do that, she'd have to have made this like an adult fantasy, not YA mm-hmm. fantasy. Mm-hmm. Like you, need, like I mean, not to say that you know YA can't have fourteen casts, but I feel like to have that level of depth, you need to have so much more mm-hmm. writing in it. You need to be so much bigger mm-hmm. than what it was. Yeah, and with a glossary, that'd be handy. Thank you. <laughs> yes, a glossary. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be so helpful. Ty, please give me that. I know. I always love glossaries for fantasy stuff in general when there are a lot of things. Well, with this one as well, I wasn't super familiar with a lot of the Asian lore and stuff like that as well. So I, I had my own little glossary that I hand wrote and would write the little. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adorable. Oh. Yep. Also, um, Captain Book said that he pictured the – sorry, he was, I can't – I don't want to just use pronoun then um, – sort of pictured the um, moon cast to be like the Khajiit in um, Skyrim. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. That's how I pictured the cats, but, like, with the birds yeah. in their beaks. I was just like, oh. Also kind thinking? of, Yeah. I think who was was it Sarah when we're at the meet? She was saying like when she when Lay was looking at all the different mooncast people, she was like she's trying to see which one she would fall in love with. Was it was it Sarah? Yeah, she's like, what is it the Swan? Or yeah, is it the no, I was doing the exact the... same thing. <laughs> like, which one is she gonna fall in love with? I know, yeah, I know. Um, and then Natasha Sapphic Solace was saying <laughs> she pictured them like Zootopia. Like I didn't even think of that. Like humanoid. Mm. Yeah, no, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I, I was also very confused about the level with which the Mooncast had 
sorry, there's a door banging. Um, I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, anyway, continuing on. I'm just having a look through some of the comments. Mm. You can definitely widen the car system with more books in a world expanse. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think this one with the main character, she's not exposed to a lot of stuff like prior to going into the castle. Like she's in a really small mm. town that's quite far away from the main part uh, of the world, like where the kingdom is set. Sorry, my brain is not doing this thing properly. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like she is quite distanced from a lot of stuff. And obviously like the relationship between the cast is quite different. Like they've got, is it a, is Tiana a moon or a, no, she's a steel she's car. Steel. She's steel. Yeah. 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 And like, that people are shocked to find out there's a steel cast working for a paper cast. Mm. Yeah. There's like this, thing. Yeah. There's so much in terms of like the yeah. politics between each of the casts and mm. like, yeah. yeah. I agree. It's almost, it's almost like racial segregation in a way. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. exactly how I read it as well. And it's yeah. like, an interesting commentary on that. Um, but yeah, so Lei was very, she was in such a different world there. And then going into the palace, everything was so different and being exposed to like the magic and things like that and the politics. Like she's not exposed to it a lot. She hears things about the sickness and rebellion and things like that. But being a paper girl, she's not going to know. She's not going to be like told a lot about what's actually happening with the politics. Just, so I feel like it's kind of the point because they're not, yeah. th there is no point in them knowing. Yeah. And they keep that kind of information from them. Mm -hmm. Then like, it might just like, you know, stop them. Makes from, sense. Like you know, why, rebelling. like why would they indulge all the secrets of the kingdom to, a concubine who exactly. is in their eyes viewed as like the lowest of the low. So it makes sense that like we as a reader aren't exposed to a lot of this stuff, but I feel like the next book, it's going to really dive into a lot of the nitty gritty details. Yeah. Um, so like, I'm very excited. Very excited I'm super keen for that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I was, um, I was pretty confused about how politically educated Lee was because she used terms like forced assimilation in the first third of the book and then she was like, I don't know anything about what's happening with the moon cast. And it's like, <laughs> how do you know forced assimilation but you don't have any idea what's happening in your own world? Oh, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't pick up on that either. Good one. Yeah. Nice one, yeah. I did not pick up on that. It's like the she's riding through on the way to the court and she's like, talking about the, the costumes that's popular in uh, oh, the yeah. kingdom. She's like, oh, yeah, that, first, that forced assimilation. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's I remember the part. Now yeah. you say that, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, talking okay. about the different types of dress that have been taken from different mm -hmm. provinces and then, yeah. yeah. I remember Which I think that. was kind of almost Natasha making a comment in terms of like historically the way it's happened and mm -hmm. with um, different provinces and things like that. But, yeah, maybe... Maybe it was weird maybe. for her to have yeah. that level and then just be completely clueless in other ways as well. So I was mm. just like, how much, like, what do we know? Here? Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I, kind of, yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, I wanted to know how the cast system originated because there was one line saying that the moon cast came from the paper cast, like way, way back when there was a line, I'm pretty sure that said that. Is that I was the like, beginning? Was that, was no, that it was towards the end. Oh, was it? Okay. I'm pretty sure there was a line towards I did tab it, but I don't have my copy with me. Um, or, or it's like it was believed that the moon cast came from the paper cast. It was like yeah. a it was a, a gift from the gods. There was a rain yeah. and anyone that ran out into it became moon cast. So everyone right. was originally paper cast. But those that went and accepted the gods' blessing became oh, moon cast and then oh. they came together and created steel cast. I have That's retained amazing. none of this book, obviously. Yeah. Was that towards well, the beginning? That was towards the okay. beginning. That makes and a lot of sense because I read the first, like, 30 pages and then I had to stop because I did a two-week-long readathon. So I picked yeah. up two weeks later and I would have forgotten all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes so much more sense. Thank you. <laughs> <For No worries. laughs> I, I read the book Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because I was okay. like, must have such notes and be so <laughs> I'm so, so, so I literally have gotten no notes because I was like, I could totally remember all of this in my head. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. God. That makes a lot more sense. That's a big mm. thing that I forgot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Good. I will, no one picked up on that either or mentioned that in our group's um, meet. So I think that must have been something that people forgot. If it was like mentioned right at the start of the book and then not mm -hmm. really referred yeah. later yeah. on. Um, Definitely. Yeah. 
Um, what? Maybe we should. I'm not sure what else I was gonna say. I was gonna say maybe we should talk about um the way that abuse was handled in the book. Mm-hmm. I definitely thought it was. Um, I thought it was done very well. Like I think that. Um, obviously for a YA as well, like it, it wasn't as explicit yeah. as <clears throat> some people thought it could have been. I know that some of the girls at our meet were a little bit um, very, very cautious going into it because they thought it was going to be a little bit more graphic, but it wasn't, which was mm-hmm. really good. But I do think that I thought it was really nicely done how Natasha also put the trigger warning at the beginning. Yeah. Saying like, look, it does contain this kind of content and it also included helplines and things like that for people that, mm-hmm. Yeah, were not comfortable and didn't and felt um, really bad about it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I really liked that. Um, I also do think it like I'm not. Sh- it's really difficult to say because I know that there's always been this kind of conversation where like you know rape is not a plot device. Like you shouldn't be using that kind of thing mm-hmm. to um, like progress someone's like character development or to like be another aspect of someone else's character development. But in this case, I thought that lay like just I don't know she's like we were saying that she's who was it was it Megan or someone else saying the mate that like she was saying that like there's different types of strong girls and like lay is definitely the kind of like girl that's like very mentally strong she's very brave and very courageous and in the face of all of this like adversity that she's like that she's um confronted with that she pulls through and it's like really nicely done Mm. and especially in terms of like she sticks to what she believes and if she's not comfortable doing anything she's not going to do it if she can like if she has any say about it and it's I really like seeing her progression from at the start feeling like she wasn't strong enough because she couldn't let the king do to her what he whatever he wanted and she ran away from that and she felt like a failure she felt like she was being weak for doing that but that's just because of like all the indoctrination of the society like, yeah, exactly. Where, which is, where which is so current now. Exactly. Like it's definitely exaggerated in the book, but it's so applicable. And it's just saying how women are so low on the pecking order. Like the demon queen who we have mentioned is literally a baby making machine. That's all she's yeah. there for. She's not in any of the politics or anything. And for the paper girls, they're literally there just for pleasure, for the king's pleasure. And then mm. to do their womanly duties later on. So like but also the fact that, like, they, the thing is the fact that they were also, like, not allowed to have other relationships. Yeah. Aside. And the fact that the king is just, like, I chose you. Like, and you're, you're my property. And yeah. you're my property. And I, I was, like, you know when you're reading something like that and you just get so mad but you just yes. don't know, like, what to do? Like, you're just like, oh, yeah. yeah, that was me. Like, the whole time. And I was like, I'm going to kill the bitch. I know. Because it was, sure. it was really hard to read in that respect. But, like. Just because Especially as women, understand. like it's so hard yeah. to read. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I really did appreciate seeing her like mentally acknowledge that she realized, no, actually what I did before running away wasn't a failure. Um, and like also with the traitor plot line as well, how that changes yeah. how she feels yeah. like a traitor to the paper cast. But actually if she does something about, about it using the position that she's in, she can be a traitor to like the system, which is for the good. Mm. Um, and yeah, oh, what Booker said, and the expectation for the girls to be happy and grateful, just. No. I like the fact that he's like, I made your favorite food. And I'm like, yeah. Or look at all the things I've done for you. You literally stole and her away from her family. You raided yeah. her village. You've done all of these things. And it's like, oh no, and, but yeah. I'm the victim in this. Ooh. I know, I know. And like yeah. the special, the special treatment that he gives Aoki, making her feel really special. And then she think she's falling in love with him Mm. and oh my god it's like the different it was so hard to read but I really appreciated seeing the different experiences that the girls had because like being in that situation like we're all going to react differently um and it it, it made sense like it was so upsetting seeing Aoki with that mentality but it made so much sense because he's such a manipulative person and who was it? Was it Sarah? Was it Sarah or was it Luma that was like he's essentially a child? Yeah, and he was like, he was, like he's just like a, an overgrown child yeah. that would just like thought that he deserved everything, but that was also um, like trying to fit into the shoes of a king. Like he didn't, he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. But also, like also, I he just, acted like he knew what he was doing. So I'm exactly. like, and I, just, I, 
I mentioned this yesterday as well. I loved when he's like, I've sacrificed so much to be here. He sacrificed his brother's oh lives God. so that he oh, could yeah, be the right. heir. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yes, you've sacrificed so much, killing your own brother so you could ascend. Yeah. The and life. then I brought up Stardust because I was like, it's literally just reminded me of Stardust. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no, I think at the Brisbane meetup, we went really deep into the way that people deal with traumatic experiences and how Aoki is showing like classic Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, we mentioned that as well. Yeah, we dived deep into that and it got real. Yeah, that's something I'm always really intrigued by. Like it's so upsetting, but I find it so fascinating how our brains do that mm-hmm. to kind of, so we're not really fully feeling traumatized the entire time. Like because your brain kind of does that, so you're at least in a happy place in this really awful situation. Yeah, because especially, like, after Lei has her experience with the king and she kind of just, it's, like, almost like she just blanks out yeah. and doesn't think about anything. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, honey, I'd, I'd, I'd do the same. Like, I, I would do exactly the same. You wouldn't want to think through it and relive it, like, yeah. every waking moment. That would be... Which is, which is classic, which is exactly what happens, like, yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. <clears throat> let's move on to a slightly more positive topic <laughs> well, a lot of people are touching on the demon queen and i think we can all agree we're all really intrigued and i definitely think she'll be a big plot like not i don't want to say big plot device but i feel like she'll definitely like make an appearance in the second book oh yeah i yeah. really want her to like just walk out and be like sup guys i'm here but also like yeah oh, I, I feel know. like we're also in spoiler territory i forgot to bridge yeah that gap <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. I, I was like, whoopsies, are we in spoiler yeah, territory? Yeah, I think, I think we are now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Spoiler territory, are. guys, FYI. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. haven't finished Get Out Now. <laughs> or just stay and listen to us, like, scream about it. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. Uh, I know at the Brisbane meet there was um, some theories put forward about what will happen with the Demon Queen in the next book. A couple of people thought it would be revealed that uh, Lay's mother would turn out to be the demon queen. Oh, who was yeah. that said at Alvin as well? Who was uh, that? I can't remember, but I also oh, I think it was um oh no, I can't remember who, who said it. But I also had that suspicion, but I was like I was like, would he go for an older woman? Like that Well, she's already proven fertile, is my thinking. That's true. And if she also does, does it describe any indicators about her eyes or is it just Lay that has the golden eyes? I think it's just Lay, but also I think that I think someone said that they thought that because Lay has like those like golden eyes, that it could mean that she's not entirely paper, which means that her yeah. mother is yeah. most likely not paper. So I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't remember. So, lots of theories. Yeah. Very interesting. I um yeah, I was wondering that as well. <laughs> and especially since Lay kind of finally says aloud that she thinks her mother is dead and comes to terms, well, not comes to terms with it, but is starting to accept that. Yeah, starting to feel that grief. Yeah. So that means in narratives, things are going to get flipped on its head and she's going to be alive. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I thought that was way too easy. Coming yeah. To be like, no, oh, no, she's not on the list. She's clearly dead. I'm like, she's not. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Emmy here has just... Um, asked what do we think what are our theories about the sickness because it's never really like it's never like explicitly um described as to what it actually is and then we do have that moment in the book when the king is talking about how he's like he acts really superstitious and he's saying how he has to appease the gods because the gods this is the like the gods have brought the sickness upon like upon the kingdom because he hasn't I don't remember what it was I think he wasn't doing not showing that he's strong enough so yeah. he has to continue what he's doing to in the next level. Type yeah, thing. bring it up a notch. Apparently, it's like yeah. actually, no. Well, maybe think about it in the sense of what you're doing is wrong. Change mm. things. Maybe that'll appease the gods. How about that? Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, sassy, the sassy owl man. <laughs> yes, I want to see. Oh more my the god, sassy yes. owl man. He was so good, especially. I love him. <laughs> Bring him back. I'm so excited for this, like, secret camp of rebels that we're going to be seeing in the second book. Like, Yes, definitely. There were, uh, there were many um, Gandalf's eagles jokes at the Brisbane meet. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> we went full nerd and it was great. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, love that. Captain Book has a really interesting theory. <clears throat> I think her mother might be something else entirely, like a fourth cast. Oh. Mm. Which would definitely be really interesting. I wonder if that's maybe Natasha slowly, like, introducing some of the other casts that she wanted in the yep. book originally. Yeah. So and it's, yeah. And it's not could have 14 or something. It's fine. Different. Casts type thing, maybe. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. I would. Oh, yes. Natasha, do this, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do it. I want this. <laughs> Especially knowing that she originally had 14 and changed it. And I'm like, it's definitely something that I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. What else is there that we can talk about that's spoilery? Oh, I mean, I guess we could, I think we should, I feel like I want to talk about Ren and Lei as like. Oh, yeah. We need this a couple. couple. Yeah. Adorable. Let's talk about this. Adorable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really, okay, so I thought that the second half of the romance was, like, much stronger than the first half, obviously, because we were saying that it kind of started off a little bit insta-lovey slash awkward, because, like, I mean, Lei just looks at Ren, like, they just look at each other, and, and they like, just, when they have the those when they have those really like gorgeous dresses on, like before they're going to go and like be like introduced to the king or whatever. <clears throat> and like, that's kind of like their initial like interaction. And I'm like, I don't see sparks. Where do sparks at? I don't know what's happening here. Um, yeah. And I think I was like, at that point, I was like, okay, so it's definitely Ren that she's going to fall in love with. Yeah. So, yeah. But then I don't know. It just, I thought it was, I think it was definitely just something that, I feel like it needed a bit of a stronger foundation mm. at the beginning. But yeah. obviously I do think that after Lei like says no to the king and then Ren goes and sees her when she's being um when she's like kept in solitary. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when she's yeah. yeah. Definitely that was really that was really um, good. I think oh, uh we discussed this a fair bit yesterday as well. In terms of like Lei, she's definitely infatu like initially really infatuated with oh, Ren. She's so <laughs> like the, just, just the descriptions of how she looked I was like girl like, we know honey we know <laughs> we know um, and then I didn't uh, I didn't initially understand why Ren had feelings for Lei like yeah. I it's like she quite couldn't understand. go to anybody else but she picked yeah. Lei like, yeah I just wanted like more solid evidence as to why she was so drawn to Lei and I think later on someone mentioned this that she does explain how that first moment seeing her in the dress she was like how it represents you and I realized it represents like your inner strength and stuff like that and I was like that's a lot to draw from a dress yeah I, I know right like that's like so much symbolism in a dress yeah. <laughs> it's very literal taking it very literally and that meant yeah yeah the um, symbolism with the dress was like so ridiculously like packed in like there was the mm. whole like yin and yang symbolism because their dresses were the opposite but the same <laughs> and then just like like Ren pulling that out of the dress I was like that's what you got out of that I saw a bomb ass dress and that was it yeah I know right I, all I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want that dress I want to wear that thanks that sounds great yeah. <laughs> can mm -hmm. I wear that to like my next formal event yeah I just wanted more than just like Ren's um, take on the symbolism to be why she was initially so drawn to Lei. Yeah. But, I also, but I also want to know, like, when they said how the dresses symbolised the person wearing it, how did they figure out what the person was like to make that dress? Like, I don't know. And to me, I felt like it just came out of nowhere. And I'm like, how? You don't know anything about Lei. She literally rocked up on the doorstep just being like, hi, yes, I'm the ninth paper girl, hi. And, mm. um, like, they know nothing about her, so how did they come up with this dress to symbolise her and for Ren to be like, I'm so drawn to you from this dress. Like, I don't know, I don't know. It's yeah. was a little, really um, confusing. Yeah, and Book Rose said, wasn't it when she runs away from the king first that Ren starts feeling things? I, I definitely think that made it more, like, made me understand more where Ren's feelings were coming from. But when she, like, was looking back talking about the dress, that didn't make sense to me. Yeah, because yeah. I, yeah. I can definitely understand Ren really appreciating Lei um, standing up for herself. But I also was just like on a personal level, just seeing the two of them interact. I just wanted to get more from Ren's because like we're in Lei's head completely. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. So I just, yeah. 
And this is her first time, people are saying, like, this is her first time experiencing any sort of romantic feelings towards anybody. So she's obviously, it's, like, super intense and she's just, like, freaking out in a way. And I'm like, girl, same. I'd be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was falling in with friends. Like, me too. (laughs) Those teenage hormones are no joke. They are no joke. (laughs) When I I literally think about, like, how my romantic feelings were in, like, high school, I'm just like, whoa. They're so intense. They're oh, so new chill. They're so chill now. Thank God. Otherwise, my boyfriend would be just like dead. I don't even know how he's going to be alive. But, you know, I on, I think like one of my favorite like scenes with like Ren and Lei was like when they were in like the, was it, I don't know, it was like a hot tub or like a sauna kind of thing when they're like. The bathhouse. The bathhouse, yeah. Oh, like in, the, the, in the bath barrel type thing. Yeah. Mm. I was like, <laughs> woo. Girls, yeah. <laughs> I was steaming in here. Hundred percent into it. Like, let yeah. us do I was, more. I want yeah. more of this. I also I feel like they could have really, like, they made themselves look so guilty in front of Blue, and they should have just played it off that they were really close friends. Yeah, like, they just yes. wild them together. So what? Like, because oh, the twins did it together. They're sisters, but that's different. But I just feel like, just in society as a whole, like girls seem to like get it not get away with but there's like kind of just like that acceptance that they're really really close in some intimate ways even if it's just platonic so i feel like they just could have just played it off they're really close friends so what they're in the same bath barrel together yeah yeah i mean like they just made themselves look so guilty i know <laughs> I and like, i was just like guys i mean blue just totally picked up on that you guys yeah. could have yeah you yeah. guys could have totally played it off come on yeah. guys oh, yeah well. It's just like you're covered in ash. Just be like, oh, I was just helping her wash her hair. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Well, and I was helping her wash her back because she can't reach it, obviously, yeah. guys. Like, no one can reach their back. <laughs> like, obviously, our maids are just like off somewhere and we're just helping each other out like good girlfriends do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But also the fact that Ren's kind of been appointed to take, like, sh- teach Lane, a, like, what is it? Escort her everywhere. So it's like, yeah, I'm really close. Yeah, friends. because she's shit at everything. So she's <laughs> just like, so she's like, all right, I'm gonna teach you how to like walk properly because you can't even do that. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it actually because we're so used to like YA protagonists that are like flawless and like clumsy, but also like, <laughs> amazing at combat. <laughs> yeah, so it was nice to see her just be shit and continue to be shit. Mm-hmm. and then get better rather than just be like oh I obviously have this innate like good ability just for no reason yeah and yeah. especially since she's had no formal education as well so it's like as if she's going to be really really good at everything yeah exactly like, without applying herself and actually really working hard for it like it definitely makes sense. Mm-hmm. um so <laughs> G said I feel really bad for Blue because can you imagine having parents like that I yeah. Mhm. That's really yeah. Hard. Kind of like the Draco character. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. Bruce Lee's mouth boy. Mhm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Bruce Lee's such a shitty position. Like I can totally understand her bit bitterness and everything. And yeah. Like if I was in her situation, I'd feel the exact same way and would snap at people like she did. And... Yeah, and just definitely try and like make yourself feel superior to just yeah. be like. Well, obviously, like, I'm here because I'm awesome, and mm. that's what my parents have decided. Like, yeah. you would have to justify it to yourself somehow. Yeah. Yeah, so I can definitely understand where she's coming from. Yeah. Mm. Just definitely. Just imagine your parents selling you off. Like, it kind of makes sense, like, with marriages being used for political gain and things like that, but, like, not even just a marriage, like, just to be essentially a sex slave <laughs> yeah I know and oh, just it made me just really really sick thinking about that mm. yeah so like in in terms of that I'm really quite glad that we didn't go explicitly into a lot of the sexual abuse because it, there is so much talk about how about it on like a systemic level yeah mm. I feel like seeing that would have just been a lot to take in yeah it would have been Traffic. yeah I feel like I would not have I would not have been able to have read the book as quickly as I did, I would have had to probably put it down for a while and just like process not come back. Yeah, just process yeah. it because it's it is something that is really hard to read. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would have been very 
was very uncomfortable and probably yeah. I needed to take a break. Yeah. I um I picked up on something that I don't think anyone else raised at the Brisbane meet, and I'm curious to see if anyone picked it up mm-hmm. with, at Sydney. Um, did you guys notice that they were never referred to by name unless they had the paper honorific? Oh. They were only referred to as girl or mistress or uh, Aoki Z or whatever it was. It was yeah. just like yeah. such systemic objectification. Mm. It's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, and that, that kind of makes sense why um, Zell was, when she was one-on-one with Lei, was just like, don't call me mistress, ew. Yeah. <laughs> call me yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was uh, an interesting choice that Zell said that and then only called Lei nine. And it's just like, that's a bit yeah, like- two, two levels there. Mm, two levels, yeah, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, shall we talk about Ren's sweet magic powers? Oh yeah. yeah I honestly, well, like when she takes Lei to that like temple and is like, oh yeah. By the way, I'm like the last member of this long lost um, tribe, or whatever. And I'm like, girl, what? What? Yeah. Because that that yeah. kind of like mentioned in passing, like earlier on. Mm. Mm. Because um, I remember, like, I've, I also, on my little definition card, I wrote down the Zia Walt. How do you pronounce it? Zia. We spelled it at book meet. We were just like X-I-A. Yeah. X-I-A yeah. Well, yeah, because I wrote that down, th- that warrior clan, and then didn't have a definition because it's, like, really briefly mentioned. And so I didn't even yeah. think about maybe that would be what was really going on with Ren because I picked up that she was probably infiltrating via being a paper girl to take yeah. down the king. Like I, I got onto that pretty early, but I didn't get that she was like magic queen. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. There's been some like really awesome fan art of her with the white eyes, the swords. And I'm just like, yes, queen. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, queen. Yes, queen. <sighs> yeah, I, I also like, Oh, I don't know if we just mentioned this because I think my brain just like totally just fizzled out. But um, you know the part when so she takes her to that tree with all the names. Yeah. Yeah. Did we mention that? I totally missed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. A little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. I really liked that. That was really nice. Yeah. That's a that's an interesting way of mourning someone. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like very nice. It was very mm-hmm. unique. Mm-hmm. Because in a way, it kind of reminded me of um, because like because I'm half Vietnamese, and so on my like my mum's side, every year we have like a death anniversary for my grandparents' parents, mm-hmm. and so we have like we all come together, we offer prayers and things like that. We also do like food offerings and stuff like that. But they also have like little cards with like their names on them, so it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which I really liked. Yeah, because like the reason, personal point of view. Yeah, because Ren initially like brought Lay there by saying that it's a day for them to mourn their ancestors. Mm. And that's yeah. how they got out of their lessons for the day. And that's um, yeah, yeah. I thought that was really lovely. And mm. when she put some um, Soraya Lay's mum's name on there, I was like, mm. I know that was so nice. I'm just so like, cool. oh, hi. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ren mm-hmm. is just like really uh, she's got an eye for details and she remembers so much about Lei and just just all these little small things that she knows Ren would really appreciate uh, sorry Lei would really appreciate yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <sighs> Ren come oh, be my girlfriend <laughs> mm. yes right <laughs> hello um, step aside all of our partners Ren is the like, I <laughs> also okay he said, who was raging that nobody checked the king's pulse before being like, oh, okay, he dead. And I was like, yes. Oh, okay, you know, he dead. <laughs> yeah, because you know how people are like, if you don't see the body, there's, it's, they're not actually dead. And in this case, I was like, okay, they see the body from far away. They don't have conclusive evidence that he's actually dead. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just remember, like, just the last page when he just, like, when she goes and feels for the pulse, I was like, the fuck? Are you serious? Of course yeah. he's not. Fucking dead. Oh, I know. So. Yeah, at the Brisbane meetup, we were all just like, 
why would you only stab him once? Like, I would have gone ham with that knife. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, well, I mean, you also have to remember, I don't think she's very physically strong either. So, she, and he's a, obviously like a demon king. So she's trying to like shove it into his throat. And it's just. Yeah. And also, like, she never would have killed anyone before. Yeah. Yeah. I think she does mention that. Like, she's like, she has no idea what she's doing. She's just, she's like freaking really out. Cool. so much blood. <laughs> What <laughs> of killing people check the body is actually dead. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's not me up. She's not gonna mm. go and double check that they're dead. Mm. Oh well. Rip. <sighs> oh well. I, mean, get, I guess we're stuck with that as the villain for the next book. Yeah. And actually this is we did talk a bit in depth about this as well, because Meg was saying how like the whole scenario with Ren being called away because her mother passed away and then they basically like the rebels are basically like okay like you can just step in it would have yeah. been really unrealistic if she successfully killed the king yeah definitely yeah i feel like if she'd been successful i would have felt like that's been a cop out but like yeah mm, because yeah. like ren's been training her entire life like 18 or so years however old she is she's been training she's like a magical warrior she knows what the hell she's doing exactly and lay had two days of like half training like so it, it makes a lot of sense that she wasn't successful and I think it would have been because when when she thought he was dead and I was like is he actually dead and I was like he can't actually be because how did she get away with that <laughs> I think, is he dead I don't know <laughs> what a lucky shot but yeah, yeah. so I'm, like, I'm glad that it wasn't so easy yeah well I thought with um like Zelly having thrown that knife into his eye it mm. might have been more of a team effort rather than yeah. just lay yeah. doing all of it so with zelly also pitching in i could have accepted that a bit more yeah that's true yeah oh in the eye as well yeah I'm i know right stuff. and I, I watched a movie the other night where someone got stabbed in the eye and i'm just like lay on the <laughs> like oh, i have my right. safety protection yeah <laughs> oh Oh yeah. Now he's just going to be wearing an eye patch in the next book, and I'm not going to be taking him any more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we were talking about at the Brisbane meetup, like his first appearance, and how they were talking about how handsome and gorgeous he was, and then suddenly there was just like this bull snout, and I was just yeah. Like, and then second the bull snout came up, I just pictured him with the ring, and that was over. It was over. <laughs> it was no longer handsome. It was just yeah. like this dude with a ring in his nose. I know. Yeah, because the descriptions of his face saying, like, his jaw juts out as well in a really bull-like manner, and the fact that she said he was super handsome, I was like, what are you on? <laughs> oh, that what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah no, like, who was it that said that they, they didn't like the fact that he was considered handsome mm. because, I mean, he was, he was young and handsome, therefore it was almost like it's okay to be one of his paper girls because he's, like, good-looking. Yeah. But then obviously, you know. Dole is dirty. Just, and he is a corrupt man. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's disgusting, mm. obviously. <laughs> Uh, Caitlin V asked, are you guys going to read the next book? Even though I enjoyed this one, <coughs> I don't think I'll continue the series. I, okay. I'm going to say yes, because I feel like the first book, it's like set introducing us to a lot of the mysteries and like what we've been given and the answers I expect to be, the questions I expect to be answered in the next book are like really enticing to me. Mm. Yeah, okay. I really want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, ready to go straight into the next book until that final page, and I was like, you motherfucker. (laughs) I know, right? I was already on board. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, boy. Mm. Yeah. I also really want to continue the series because, like, it's just something that I – like I'm just really loving all of these like Asian inspired fantasies coming out and I just want more. Mm. I just want more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Give it to me. Mm-hmm. I'll read all of them. Give me the diverse LGBTQIA plus. Give it to me. I will, I will, I will just... read it just for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. 
um, she was like, I do wish Ren just slashed once before flying away, like with the king. I was like, yeah, that would have been smart. Coming in and just making sure, because they had, oh, uh, they didn't really have time actually, because Naja, the fox, God, she is annoying. She was. I know, right? I literally want to the fuck off. Just, I just, I just <sighs> die. That just makes die. Like, she just encapsulates what I hate about how, like, society conditions women to hate other women. Like, she's just like, whore, yeah. slut. I'm just like, she, when she stood to this position, what the hell? Like, I, yeah. when she said that to Lei, like, when she was walking, like, going to the king's um, chambers, I was like, bitch, what? Yeah, I was like, you do realize she has no choice, right? Like, she yeah. has to do this. I know. They're just, because I'm, I'm kind of annoyed. It was it was upsetting to see, but it also makes sense because that's something that is present, like in our society, like the girl on girl hate. Yeah. Um, it makes sense, but I was just like, and then she's like, jealous bitch. I was like, maybe she loves the king. Just, uh, uh. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I think she's just super loyal. I think yeah. that's the whole yeah. thing. Like she's just really loyal. Yeah. And she's moon cast. So. Yeah. yeah. Just, just annoying how petty she is in the way that she's loyal. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. We all have bad feelings about this fox guard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. And, and she did fucking Kenzo dirty as well at the end. And I was just like, you bitch. I was, I was, that was the most upsetting thing. I was not prepared for him to not survive. Yeah. I was um, like, there's not, if, if the king's not dead, there is no way that Kenzo is dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. Kenzo, my son. <laughs> What Red happened? <laughs> oh. That's all right. Good question. G says, whatever happened to Blue, do you think we will see her later? I do think we will. I do think we will. Like, and I, I think she'll have a lot more development, I think. Yeah. Like, I feel like it would be kind of the predictable route that I'm going with is, like, she will pop up later and there will definitely be some development in her and then just, like, separating herself from what, She's experienced with her family situation, things like that. Maybe a bit of a Draco mm. redemption as well. <laughs> please give, give me, me the redemption, redemption arc, please. <laughs> yes. I want the redemption arc so badly. <laughs> I really, really love a good redemption arc. So I'm like, I can, I would not be surprised if she ended up coming back into the story in some way, potentially in a relatively significant role. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I would love to see her like just show up at the the rebel base and be like, "Bitch, I'm here. Mm. Let me help." Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me help, please. Uh, was anyone as any was anyone a little disappointed with the lack of fire? Yeah, man, where my fire at? The only fire we got was when the um, rebels burned the down. The, yeah. The, the, the yeah, and then more of the symbolism with Lay's in a fire. But when um when that master Chiyoko, whatever his name is, had that little weird premonition moment, I, mean, I thought when because he was standing right next to Lay, yeah. so I was like, maybe he's actually. Seeing something about Ren, not Lei. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I was like, which one is it? I don't know. I know. I was like, because mm -hmm. at that know. point, I was like, she's obviously infiltrating, and then something's going to happen. A building's going to get burned down because of her mission. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what yeah. happens at the end. <laughs> like, yeah. which, like, yeah, palace is on fire when they're running away. Absolutely. Like yeah, definitely. Mm. Was anyone else let down by Lei's birth? blessing egg pendant light came out yeah i know like the whole time you're just like what is in this i need to know what is mm -hmm. in there and then it's fucking what like mm. are you the just very just... literal kind of symbolisms going on yeah wasn't it flight Not very subtle yeah it was flight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then she's like ren is my wings but also taught me to use my own i know right <laughs> Oh, Eve, man, like it, was a, it was a little bit, a little bit uh, cringe in a that bit. part. But it's yeah, right. but I was also kind of glad that she wasn't just like Ren is my wings, and it's like all like Ren is like the savior, and like Ren is like her world. Yeah, it yeah. Wasn't like I was that, glad yeah. that she was like Ren is helping me to learn more about myself rather yeah. than yeah. So I was glad that she didn't go full full cringe. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was towing the line. She was <gasps> definitely towing the line. <laughs> Maybe she has flight power though. Yellow eyes, bird, link. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Oh, actually, yeah, because I I 
there's been quite a few comments and some people said maybe this fourth cast is like a shapeshifter thing. Yeah. Maybe she could shift into a bird. Mm, I'd be interested. She's the sassy female owl. She is. That that we've, we've she is the sassy female owl. Done. Are you the sassy female owl? Yes. Yes? A compliment yeah. the other owl. Love it. Yes. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. Such an interesting theory. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I'm excited. I see. This is why I'm so excited for the next book because it's like the possibilities where this could go. Yeah. Well, one of the theories that came up at the Brisbane meet is that after Lay's uh, night with the king, we never saw her take the herbs. <gasps> so that we're thinking that she might. Oh be my pregnant. god. And I was. I was really horrified that that might happen. Yeah. Because I, I thought about that at a different point in time, um, but I didn't. I didn't pick up on the fact that we didn't see her take the the herbs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It is yeah. all kind of glossed over. No, we see her walking out all bloody, and then Kenzo's just like, Picks "Oh my god, that would be mortifying." Way. Yeah, and like we're thinking the next book might be the king coming for her so he can get his heir. Oh my God, yeah, because the queen's not, because he's he's not really fertile and hasn't had any yeah. success with the demon queen. I was the empty really, king. Yeah, I was <laughs> really, actually really interested to see that it was the king who was considered infertile, not the woman, as is often considered yeah, the which, case. Yeah, which is always, yeah, it's always like that, wasn't it? How it's always the woman that's at fault. Yeah, yeah. Henry the eighth. So I really oh, appreciated that the play, the, the onus was on him and his fertility. Oh my god, I'm mortified if that's oh no. No. I'm really so not. horrified if that's the case. I'm just gonna be like Wow. But then so, you could then you could get into a really interesting discussion about females' body rights and potential abortion and stuff as well in the yeah. next book. Oh. And Gemma's comment, especially if we're thinking the queen is her mother, I was just like really uncomfortable with the, by the fact that this guy is raping a mother daughter duo. That just thought making me, that made me very uncomfortable. If, if oh, she is the queen. oh my god, I didn't even think about that. Oh no! Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh -oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Sorry, the bit slow. Not our fan. We're just all shaking our so heads hard. like. Mm -mm. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. That's a lot of what the Brisbane meet was. It was just all of us shaking our heads and cringing. Oh man. Yeah. We well, I mean, I think we had only I think we only had one person at our meet that was like super like slamming the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean her, her points were all valid and and like, yeah, it was fine. All good. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of it was personal preference as well. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, yeah, we only had one person come to the Brisbane meet that DNF'd the book, which is mm. like normally about half of us don't like the book and half of us do enjoy it. Whereas mm. more of a, more of us lean towards enjoying it and were interested yeah. to see how it went to the Same. next one. Because with this one, we had one 1 1.5 stars. We had one, like, 4.8 stars, and the rest of us were, like, three to four. Yeah. Four to yeah. So it was, it was uh, most most of us were, like, three plus. We enjoyed it, yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I had, I had to discuss hope for this. I had high hopes, which mm. was uh, and Yeah, it was good. Mm. I enjoyed it. All right. I think we might start wrapping this up if there's any other pressing questions or anything that we've missed and you want to quickly discuss before we finish up, then definitely let us know. There's so much to talk about with this book. I feel like we could, could continue. Yeah, for there are so many points in it that I feel like, yeah, yeah. we could just keep going. But obviously we don't want this live show to be like five hours. Long. Yeah. <laughs> so Your we need to wrap to up. Eat. Um, yeah. I'll, just, I'll have a quick look on Twitter just to make sure no one's. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, um, Oh, I feel like I'll take this opportunity to let you guys know what our plan is moving forward. So as oh, I mentioned, yes. this is the last book uh, of the month that we're doing for the year. So we're taking a break in December and we're taking a break in January. 
Um, we will be returning in February to read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Which is um, obviously the book that this, this entire the, book club was yeah, inspired by. Okay. Yep. So well, I'm not going to with that one. And Patrick Rothfuss knows that we've got <laughs> sure. a book club named after his book. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is my favorite book of all time. I know. I'm so I'm ready to read it. Read it. <laughs> we needed to read it at some point, honestly. So we'll reread it for a lot of us. Um, so we'll, we'll, this actually gives you like three months to read the book, which is good. Um, and we do have the next few months after that also planned. So I feel like I'll just give you a heads up. Um, so February, no. Yep. So February is the name of the wind. In March, we're going to be reading The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. That's, and like, that's a thick book. So It is a thick book. It's also like 850 pages. So after that, in April, we're going to do like a short book. So we will probably take some suggestions, but we're thinking something like How's Moving Castle. Um, but if we get any other good book suggestions you guys would rather read, we'll put up a poll on Twitter so we can decide the April book. And then... I am doing the months right, aren't I? Yes. Yeah. Then, yep. <laughs> then May, we're going to be reading Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, the man booker prize winner of the seven brief killings. Yeah, seven mm -hmm. brief killings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing for the start of 2019. After that, we will continue to do some polls on Twitter and stuff like that. But since we've kind of got the first four months already decided, we thought I'd let you guys know now so you can prepare ahead of time. Oh, I'm so happy that everyone's really excited by the name of the wind. Like we had to read it at some point. Oh my God, look at all these comments. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yay. Okay, cool. So oh, I forgot to actually get to Twitter. I started talking. Oh, no, that's okay. So that was a question that we spoke about in um, the Brisbane meet. If you guys were a steel or a moon cast, what would your animal aspect be? Oh, this is a nice question. Okay. Question. Welcome. This is from my little brain. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, oh, Kaz, you can go first because I went first last time. Well, I feel like to be on brand, I'd have to say an owl. I can be the sassy <laughs> owl. The sassy yes. owl, yes. Yes, yes Kaz, so you'd be rude cast. Owl. Yes. <laughs> I think it would also be very beneficial because I'm terrified of heights. So if I could fly, I feel like I could just overcome that and rain the skies. I love it. I'm yes. <laughs> I would be I can't I'm leaning towards like I can't, I'm leaning either towards like a wolf or like a tiger or something like that but like not full moon cast probably like steel I don't want to be like completely animalistic I want like a little bit of my human features there you know yeah I don't know. I don't know. what about you what did you what did you pick Rochelle um I said that I was going to be a bird of some kind because I've always had like every quiz that I've ever done that's like what what's your animal affinity has always come out as like a an eagle or a, a crow or something. So I love it. I'm, I'm yes. definitely either a bird or I also have like a lot of feline energy apparently. So mm -hmm. it would be either a bird or a cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I'd, I'm stealing this from Sarah, who was at the Brisbane meet, but I just want a tail so I can casually knock things off when I'm pissed off. Ah! <laughs> I, I just like, it. you've got a table and just like. You're just like the cat, you know, the I cat just like pushes, cat. just pushes things off the, like the benches. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Just at work annoyed with someone. Whoops. Sorry. Were you drinking that mug of coffee that I just spilled with my tail? My bad. Mm, I'm so, bad. so sorry. <laughs> so I'm clearly not sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling to contain myself. She said, my boyfriend said, T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big head and little arms. I'm I'm quite <laughs> amazing. Uh. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> there was that one point towards the end where, what was it, Lay had been sleeping or she'd been crying or something and her makeup was running. And then who was it that she was talking to? And afterwards he was like, I don't know if you've seen your face, but you kind of look like a panda. And I was like, wait, oh, did she actually have a panda? panda? Yeah, was like, that's no, no, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was so funny. I was like, wait, oh my God, what happened? 
she has suddenly sprouted into a panda. <laughs> yes. Oh. The tail is cut down from the cruel prince. Yes. I'm so keen for the wicked king, man. I need that. I need in my to life. read that. Oh god. Oh, the cruel prince. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I would recommend it. I really liked it. Yeah. I'm excited to get to it. I'll get. I'll get there one day. The world building is my favorite aspect for sure. It's also set in the same world as um, Darkest Part of the Forest, right? Because I've read that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we're going to probably wrap this up now. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> final live show for the year. I know. It's kind of sad. I know. It's okay. But I it's okay. just got here. We have to. I know. <laughs> Why so would you okay, this Rochelle, month? we'll do one for the next every single month. We'll just do just you and me and Kaz and everyone. We'll just <laughs> chat. We'll just have we'll a chat. Just chat about what we've been reading that month. Yeah. Yes. It's let's fun. do it. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Love it. Um, yeah. But honestly, thank you guys so much for joining us today and chatting to us about Girls of Paper and Fire. It's been a really good discussion, I think, and we had a lot of fun. And a big thank you and welcome to Rochelle for joining us. I'm so excited to have you on the host team. Yay. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. Yes. Just been like casually throwing out hints for like the last six months. It's fine. You guys have only just caught on, but. <laughs> we're really slow okay like slow. <laughs> we are so slow but we had to like we're having Rochelle on as a permanent host who's just gonna be with us forever more um but Jean will be stepping down when she has her her baby I yeah, mean, no, that's she fair couldn't have thought about us before doing this but it's fine it's well, fine she thought about it but clearly not <laughs> um yeah so a baby's a big priority not much reading's gonna get done so she will yeah. be taken uh, as much time as she needs yeah yeah all right but uh yeah we'll see you guys in the new year with our discussion for the name of the wind so look forward to that but um i originally just like oh hello ah, <laughs> so i'm so excited i'm really excited to reread it honestly it's gonna be a good time okay we'll all see right you later bye, bye. bye.